Right, uh, so a short introduction, um, Captain and I. Uh, so we're exploring uh, how to deploy autonomous shipping. Uh, we've been doing this for about five years, four years now. Four years. And um, so we've really kind of took a really deep dive into everything that's necessary, keyed out a few elements that needed to be developed, uh, which kind of led us to this project. So one of the technologies that we felt needed to be developed was uh, path planning. Um, we extensively looked at all of the path planning solutions that were out there for autonomous shipping, uh, and nothing really seemed to fit the bill. Nothing was precise enough, uh, and uh, and so we took the job on ourselves, uh, and and essentially that laid the foundation for the project we're going to talk about today. Um, so I'll just get into. It. Uh, all right. So our collaboration with the Port of Rotterdam happened. Um, Already a few years ago, we, we were working on the project called the Floating Lab. Uh, essentially, it's a project intending to see what it would be like to have an autonomous vehicle. So we started developing high levels of autonomy on this vessel, and we've learned a lot from this vessel and this opportunity. Uh, we learned how to interface with maritime equipment, um, having access to equipment that we would have otherwise not have had access to, like a $30,000 a uh, fog sensor uh, and also radars. Uh, so we learned how to interface with the radars, how to extract the data from that. And this all happened with um, with with this RPA3. And then we also did some some of the, the longer runs with the RPA3 uh, and, and got to interact a lot with with the vessels and it was a great learning experience for us. Uh, so this is a little bit of uh, one of the, the runs that we were running um, while we we're doing some testing. Uh, so uh, you can see the the path being generated. Um, we have uh, target detections, and uh, and I suppose the captains were feeling comfortable to to really not uh, stand in front of of uh, the controls, and and so this was successful. We could test uh, controls in really strenuous weather conditions, uh, and see how how weather would affect the real time path planner that we had, uh, along with the control system that we designed. So this brings us to uh, the project that we're talking about today. Essentially, um, the VTS project uh, was digitized initially to be able to handle a lot of the interactions that you'd see uh, and, and to account a lot of the maneuvers and, and the motion that the, the vessels you'd see in a port. And so uh, the transition to a digital platform really enabled someone to be able to get a, a holistic view of the whole port and to account for how, how everything is working. Uh, and, and then the possibility of adding tools to that also became somewhat realistic. So essentially, um, once you could digitize your tools, that means you could do calculations. And here you see the closest uh, point of collision. Um, and so you can do these calculations to see when these boats would get close to each other or not. Uh, we call this time to collision, which is a little bit different. I believe you guys call it um, nearest point of approach. And um, and we use the time to collision, which is essentially the time it would take you uh, to collide into an object if you do nothing about it. And, and essentially that's when you start kicking in the maneuvers of, OK, I need to slow down the boat. I need to uh, maneuver around the boat. And we took this technology. Uh, and, and we created algorithms that could kind of analyze uh, how, how boats are behaving and, and seeing when they would interact so that we could interject and make changes in anticipation. Now, this technology in the framework of a VTS system uh, is also very interesting. So essentially what we do is, is we use um, a sophisticated algorithm that kind of determines how these paths behave in a, in a realistic way. And then we try to project the motion of the vessels using current velocity uh, and to see when they interact. And essentially that's the solution that we're exploring. So to recap, we have the current VTS system, which uses technology to, to determine uh, in one way how boats will interact. So in this case, it's, it's a linear predictor, and then they try to calculate the distance uh, of when they would intersect. What we're proposing is, is um, a route and then analyzing the routes that the boat will take and then seeing when uh, when a situation might arise. And then this is classified into three categories, which is caution, warning, and alarm. So a little bit of background on how the algorithm works. 
Uh, I saw something similar in, in one of the icons from, from, from uh, one of the attendees, which is the historical data of AIS. Uh, and essentially, we've taken the world AIS data and we've been able to create an algorithm that can capture the motion uh, of this data. And it was very important to, for us to approach this problem this way because um, the more conventional approaches, which is measuring things by hand or doing uh, specific surveys, was very laborious. So we needed to figure out a, a quick way to cash in on historical information. Uh, and so what we did is we took historical information and converted that into routes that you can actually use. So by looking at how boats behave on a regular basis, you can capture that motion. And if you can see here, this is um, our, our path planner. And you have two destinations and start point and end point. And depending on whether you start one way or you end the other way, it'll give you a different route. And that's because it it uh, the way boats navigate is different. They, they always have to be on the right side of a lane if possible. And so in a sense, uh, we capture the behavior of humans uh, and try to offset as many um, rules that we have to, we would have to program in manually. Uh, so that's what happens when you apply this to all of the vessels at the same time. So we take this algorithm and we apply this to all of the vessels uh, in real time. And then, of course, you get this map and, and it looks like a yarn ball of, of lines, which uh, from the feedback that we had from the VTS operators is, is, is a bit overwhelming and, and would be a bit too much information to be able to process. So using um, that information, we decided to start approaching the problem in a, in a different way. We said, OK, well, instead of having a human operator look at all of the potential routes and try to determine when they collide, well, now we're in a position where we can actually take these routes, uh, predict uh, the event into the future, and now start ranking uh, when these events will happen. And so here on the left side, you see this, this bar. It's an alert bar, which will tell you the different levels of warnings ranked by uh, event occurrence. Uh, and the different caution, warning, and alert is essentially uh, specifying how close it thinks it will get. Uh, so essentially, it's broken down uh, where caution is, is about 67 uh, meters to 100 meters. And these are fully configurable. We can program those quite, quite easily. This was a little bit uh, of, of, by looking at it, what we thought the VTS operators would consider uh, to be these different classifications. And so um, here's an example of, of a collision. Uh, this is a warning, it's a bit closer. Uh, and here's, here's an example of, of uh, warning and you start seeing that they really do get kind of close. And then of course, uh, an alarm is when we, when we actually believe that these vessels uh, are going to collide. So um, essentially, what we've done now is, is we've taken uh, software which was digitized initially, uh, but then started looking at it from a new lens in terms of how do you make this scalable and how, what other tools are interesting. Uh, and so this whole platform is, is built with the cloud in mind. So uh, using Kubernetes and commute, compute engines means that you can just scale uh, by running more of them. Uh, and, and these are cloud features that we can leverage quite quite easily. Um, and so we also looked at the tool suite uh, using predicted paths and the way that they intersect. It gives you more insights on, on what the future looks like. Uh, and this lets you spend more time on the critical situations. So um, having to run uh, all potential collisions in, in the mind might be a bit overwhelming just to do that in, by, by thought alone. But if you have a visual uh, simulation uh, that can show you what it would look like uh, potentially in the, few, in the future, then you can do something about it. And something that I actually forgot to mention is that uh, when you click on one of these events, you can set uh, as called, but these events will persist unless the prediction is that they will not interact anymore. And so it's when the operator calls and the action is actually taken, that this message, uh, that the prediction algorithm predicts that it's not going to collide anymore or, or going to have a near miss and by itself um, remove that message. And that's very interesting because 
that means that the operator has to take action that actually matters for this situation to be resolved and he can't just flag it off. Uh, we thought that that would be an interesting uh, feature to, to add. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's an algorithm that's running all the time. So you can consider it like a second pair of eyes continuously looking for different situations, highlighting things that might not be obvious. Uh, and again, these BTS operators spend a lot of time uh, learning the quirks of a scenario. So they, it takes them years to really master the, the different tools and, and skills to actually see what kind of scenario might occur. And our hopes are that this type of technology will make it uh, make that barrier a little bit lower so that you'd have um, operators adopt these skills a lot quicker and intuitively see situations that might take uh, someone a lot longer to learn. Um, and so uh, the other point is, is ETDs and ETAs I thought was very interesting. So estimated time of, of departure and uh, estimated time of arrival. Uh, if you look at this scenario right here, uh, these there are two vessels that are near to departure, and you can already see that if these vessels were a lot bigger, that they would occupy the same space in the water. And so if one of the vessels stayed moored for a little bit longer, he would save a lot of uh, fuel consumptions, not having to wait or, or uh, use the reverse uh, thrusters, which also is, is more efficient. Uh, and then for us, this is very, uh, it's a somewhat of a key element in the whole stack of autonomy. Uh, at one point, autonomous vessels are going to have to interact with, with the port uh, and to automate these calls and, and to figure out a smart way to handle this is, is very much within our interest. So how, how does it happen when an operator needs to contact a, a vessel and there's no human operator? Uh, currently, we're looking at solutions maybe to do a relaying of that information through radio. But ideally, what you'd want is you want the operator to be able to negotiate with, with the vessel and the vessel to negotiate with other vessels. Uh, so, that, so that's a little bit um, our, our interest in this project. And for that, I think uh, that, that concludes uh, what we're working on. Um, and, uh, and so the next steps is, of course, to connect it uh, to, to real-time data uh, using the more accurate RMS type of data uh, to enhance situational awareness and, and, and make it live, uh, which would be very exciting. And, and so that's essentially the, the project that we're working on. Um, I hope you've gotten a good insight uh, on, on what we're trying to achieve here. And if you have any questions, um, I guess now is the time to do that. Yeah, Rod. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and just just as I uh, as, as we we did this uh, proof of concept together with uh, Captain AI because well we are we're already working together also on the on the RPH three, but it was also to gain insight from out of the port authority side of the VTS side, is how could we use new technologies like artificial intelligence within our system and and we used uh, I think that's good to add. The CPA calculation you've seen are scenarios we normally use in our simulator to train our VTS operators. So we gave them a, 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 a training scenario within this uh, proof of concept where we know that it, it should be used uh, or the CPA calculation should be used to uh, um, solve this, uh, this situation. Um, so thank you, uh, Gerard, for the presentation. Are there questions to Gerard or to me? Yeah, I will have a question uh, to uh, Gerard. Is this proof of concept, is that also integrated in the current VTS system that you have running in your port operations, in your VTS center, or is it a separate system? Uh, yeah, good question. So uh, we were received a, a recording of a simulation that they use uh, to train uh, operators on different scenarios. And so we took that recording, we reconstructed it into our own simulator. We also have a simulator so that we could um, play back real world. And so essentially what we did is we emulated Aramis um, by just using AIS as a foundation, but uh, and, and, and just simulating AIS as if it was um, Aramis. And that data is what we recorded and used to run the demo. So in fact, it's, a, it's an actual pa uh, packet capture, so a network capture. Uh, so, so the analogy is very similar. Yeah. Yeah. 
But the answer is no, it's not, it's not incorporated yet. It's, it's really a proof of concept. And the next step probably will be that we will make a live proof of concept and that we could test, um, well, the setting with alarms, warning and cautions uh, for usability, because that's one of the concerns that it's a kind of a Christmas tree with lots of lights uh, for the VTS operators, which could, might be distract them. So yep. but that's the next phase. First phase was proof concept of the technology and whether uh, um, Captain AI could deliver uh, something like that. I saw the other hand from Frederick. Yes, hi, thank you. And thank you for a very interesting pre presentation, Gerard. Um, I, I have uh, yeah, just a question. Uh, we, we have worked uh, a lot with the, the STM different projects and, and we have a couple of projects of them running now, the STM Bolt Safe and STM Efficient Flow in the in the Baltic Sea, uh, where we actually used the RTZ format and soon to be S421 format, which is, includes the the, the, the route information and the, and the schedule of the routes, which you are clearly lacking, but you, 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 you talked about the schedule, for example, the schedule information. And we are incorporating this in, in our VTS uh, software around the Baltic Sea. So, so that's just a heads up that the standards and the in incorporation of, of, uh, uh, of the voyage parts are, are actually being done at the moment with, with uh, known standards. So, so that, that could be, you probably already know this, but but uh, but that is uh, you, you are very welcome to to contact me and get all the information we have in those projects as so open open source. So yeah. if you are, of course, uh, that's, so that's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> thank thank you, Frederick. Yeah, it's true. Um, well, what we the, the difference between the S uh, for uh, twenty one is that we assume that ships will give their route. I think that's the best thing you can get is the the route from a ship. Which says, uh, well, I will going to do that. But what we try to do is, we know that within the within the port area, for for sure, not all ships will be very smart soon. So we try to uh, also look at the prediction side. So it's mm. it's uh, an an and situation. But it's true, Frederick. Um, I'm I'm very glad within the Baltic all the the things you're already doing with SEC, with SEM because uh, uh, that's I think a good learning pool for as well Ayala as well uh, the world. Ah, but that's great, and and of course, yeah, you're right. Uh, the we, we 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 should also use our best guess and try to predict, of course, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Other other questions? Otherwise, I think uh, wow. Gerard Vincent, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I think uh, uh, there is uh, there is interest from out of the world. Um, in, in solutions on uh, on DSTs. Uh, that's why uh, uh, many of us worked on the DST uh, a working group within Ayala last uh, last BTS 50. And uh, well, uh, we 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 probably will uh, go on uh, uh, with the next uh, next one, but uh, well, that's not the final the decision made yet. But uh, thank you very much. And uh, when there are no questions anymore, I would like to uh, close this meeting. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks very much for that.